uh, we're a Blue Beam Platinum partner um, across the Australia and New Zealand region. Um, we're also a reseller of Autodesk software, FM systems, Dropbox for business, Theme Backup, GoFMX, and ESET Endpoint Security, which isn't on there as well. Um, also hardware for Dell, HP, and Lenovo, and then we have a training and professional services division called Cab West Bureau. Um, at any point, if you guys have any issues you want me to cover, um, or you have a question you're not sure about, send me an email, alex at advancedspatial.com.au, explain your issue in as much detail as you can, send me a file that you're having a problem with, um, and I can go through the problem and solution for everyone um, in next week's webinar. Um, I tend to find that a lot of people have very common issues. That, um, so usually if you're having one issue, a lot of people will be, so it's good to sort of see them and, and um, hopefully be able to solve them in the, the following weeks. If at any point you need to find help, um, always feel free to reach out to myself, alex at advancedspatial.com.au. Um, give us a call on 1300 672 um, and You can also find help in the help menu. Um, so help them into the help, uh, online help menu thing. Um, and then also help and launch review tutorials. I'll show you where to find those as we go into the software again, as always. Um, so yeah, we've got a few more people joined in now, so let's get started. So we've got, today we're gonna to go through creating custom symbols and line types. So um, the lessons today, we're gonna to go through using the, draw, the basic drawing tools to actually create a symbol, um, grouping items, customizing the symbols without having to ungroup them, um, adding them to the tool chest to reuse later. Um, we did a webinar a couple of weeks ago on the tool chest, so um, you can always go back to that if you need more detail on, on creating tool sets and that kind of stuff as well. Um, and then we're also going to create a sequence from a symbol as well. Um, and then the next part of it is creating a custom line set and custom line styles. So um, I'll show you how to do that. So there's a lot of different applications for those and different people in different industries tend to use them for particular things. Um, so yeah. All right, so let's get started. Um, let me just go into Bluebeam. I'm just going to open up a blank PDF, just because that's all we're going to need to work with today. Yeah, okay. So I've just got my blank PDF now. Um, just quickly before we do go further as well, to find help in here, just go to help, and then you can open up the help menu. Pops up uh, this little guy with a breakdown of every single tool that's available in the software. Um, you click into one of them, it shows you what it is, what it's used for, how to use it, and everything like that, and how to customize it, and that kind of stuff. Um, the other one is the launch review tutorials. And in here, there's a breakdown of different workflows. Um, hit next, and it brings up a short video. And you can open a sample floor plan as well, so that you can work alongside the video. So those are some really, really useful tools if you're not sure how to do something or you've forgotten how to use a tool or you're not sure what's available. So um, definitely explore those when you've got some time. So the first thing we're going to do today is just create some basic symbols. So um, there's, you can create many different things. Um, on the, the left, right hand side, sorry, um, you should see some basic kind of drawing tools here. So you've got a line tool, um, you've got an arrow tool, there's arc, uh, it's a polyline, uh, you can put a dimension in, um, there's a rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, and a polygon. So the symbol I'm just going to draw today is a basic, um, just a quick one, a circle uh, with a layer inside to uh, label some sort of thing. So before we do anything, I'm just going to go to my tool chest and I'm going to, I'm just going to switch my profile, sorry. So I'm just going to uh, create a new tool set quickly. So just going to manage tool sets and I'm going to call this one custom symbols. If you want more detail on this kind of part, um, if you look back on YouTube to the, the I think it's week three, the tool chest webinar, um, you'll find there's some really good detail on that. So I'm just going to save that one in the default folder and OK. OK, so first thing I'm doing, I'm just going to create my circle. So if I use the ellipse tool and I hold down the shift key, and I can draw my circle. And you see it draws a perfect circle. Normally with the ellipse tool, if you don't hold shift, it just draws a very hard manage kind of shape, which is horrible. So you hold the shift key and it draws that perfect circle. 
And then I'm just going to use the text box. Um, there's, there's two things you can do with this. Um, you can use the typewriter tool to do this, but the problem with the typewriter tool is you can't auto-size text, which become, it becomes a problem if you go to uh, resize the tool later. Um, so I always recommend using the text box tool instead. Um, just draw a basic text box. It doesn't matter how big it is at this stage. I'm just going to put the letter uh, A in there. So now I've got my circle and my A. In the A, I'm just going to select the auto size button here. And then I'm also just going to auto size my text box to the size of the letter. I'm going to make the letter a little bit bigger and then just resize that text box again. Now, you see it's a little bit off center, uh, which is not ideal for what I want. So also in the properties panel, I'm going to change this, the alignment of that letter to be center and also align to middle. So now it's going to sit in the middle of that text box, um, but the text box still isn't centered. So what I do is I right click uh, the first element and go down to alignment and center in document didn't move very far, but it's now in the center of the document. Then I do the same with the text as well. You go to uh, alignment and then center in document. And the other thing I want to do as well is put a white background in the back of this so that um, I can't, if I put this on top of a drawing, it, it blocks out and it becomes very prominent so I can see it. So I'm just going to go into fill color and go to white. Um, you see that the A is still sitting on top, which is good. That's how I want it. Um, and then basically to group them, all I've got to do is select both elements. So I'm drawing a selection window across them all. Right click one of them and go to group. We can get control G as well. If you're making a lot, it can be a good to do that. It's a lot quicker. So now I've got my basic symbol. This could signify anything. This is just a really, really simple version of it, but the idea is to create what you need, whether it has arrows pointing off of it, curves, doesn't really matter what it is. Um, and then that's the sort of the process to do it, to group them, uh, make sure you order them. If you if you find that uh, when they're ungrouped, let's say you put a background in something and then the text disappears, what it is is it's ordered uh, behind it like so. So all you need to do is select the element that's got the cover and send it to the back and it will bring that A back forward. So I'm just going to group those back together again. Now I want to add this to my, my tool set that I've made. So I'm going to right click this and just go to add to tool chest and custom symbols and you'll see it pops up in there. Now if I go into detail mode in here, you'll see that the, the comment picks up that uh, the letter that's inside there. So to change that, there's a couple of ways we can do this. So you can do it with, with the symbol on here. You can actually just double click that A and you'll be able to change that in there. Um, you can hold Alt, which will uh, sort of separate the elements without ungrouping them. So you can resize just the, the B or move it around or whatever you want to do. I'm just going to take that back to normal. Um, or you can change it in here. So if I just go before I place the tool and put a B in there, it changes that to a B as I put it out. Um, you can also label things in here as so a subject, I want this to be uh, A, whatever it is, um, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much how you customize them in here. Um, I'm just going to change this back to A. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a sequence. So to do that, all I need to do is right click the tool in the tool set, go to sequence and define. Um, you can set up how this, whether it's numbers, letters, capital letters, lowercase letters, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, I'm going to put uh, capital letters because that's what I've got here. I'm going to make my prefix uh, one. So this is what will come up before the letter. Um, and that's all I'm going to put in there. So actually, no, I'm not going to put a prefix in there, but if you want something to come up before the letter, you can put it in there or you can put in the suffix as well. Um, I always want my start to be the first, so it'll be defined as one, and my increment is one, so it's going to go up A, B, C, D. If I go to two, that'll go A, C, E, and so on and so forth. 
I remember the alphabet when I tried to do it like that. Um, but I'm just going to hit OK. And you can see that symbol in the tool set changes to uh, a play icon. So now if I go to place this on the document, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, for example. So that's basically um, creating symbols, sequences, um, and you can, you can do that in, in many different ways. Um, I recently created a, a number of tool sets for, for a company which had just lots and lots of different symbols that were uh, unrelated to security and CCTV and that kind of stuff. Um, and basically it was all this kind of stuff, just creating circles with letters, cameras and all this sort of stuff. So it can be very useful in different industries depending on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, and, and if you guys do not don't have the time to create the symbols yourself, you can always reach out to us as well and we're, we're happy to help. So um, that's basically the symbols. The next part of today we're going to go through is line types. So I'm just going to delete all those off. And I'm just going to draw a line. So basically to create a uh, line style, um, first we've got to create uh, a line set and then we can create a line style. We can add it to existing sets, but I'm going to create a new one for today. So basically what I'm going to do today is create a, uh, uh, we're going to create a hot water line similar to this one here. Um, and we're going to create a cold water line as well. Um, so I'm just going to hit manage here. Um, so this was under style and then manage. And then I'm going to add my own, uh, add my own line style set. So add, and then I'm just going to call this water lines. And hit OK. And yes. Cool. So now this is my new set. And in here, I can add different styles. So I'm going to go to add here, and I'm going to call this one hot water. Cool. So currently, this is what my line looks like. Um, I can add a description if I want to, but I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, you can add more lines in here. So if you need multiple lines to be in your uh, setup, and then you can customize each different line as well. But for this one, I just need one line, so I'm going to leave it as is. And then down here where it says components is where I can customize this to make it look how I want it to. So I'm going to hit the add button and go to type, and I'm going to add a dash first. So it doesn't change anything at the moment because that is just one dash. Um, next thing I want to add is a space. So I'm just going to keep basically going add, add different components. So now you can see there's a space in between them. The next thing I want to do is add text. By default, it's just going to say text in there. And I'm going to change this to HW. Uh, you can change your font if you want to, make it bigger, make it bold or italic, whatever you want to do. Um, and then we're going to hit uh, plus again, and we're going to put another space in there. Um, and then you can put another dash if you want to, or you can just make the you can make the first dash wider. You don't need to put another one in, but I'm just going to put the second one in for sake of it to make it look even. Um, and now I've got my whole waterline, so it's pretty simple. Um, hit OK from there. Um, and then OK again. And then if I just change my style to scroll down to my new one, which is water lines, go to hot water, we'll see that that line changes to there. Um, I want this to be red as well as it is right now. So what I'm going to do is save this line into the tool chest, into my custom symbols one, and I'm going to put it in properties mode. So I'm just going to double click it and it's going to switch to properties mode. So now I can redraw my line with a different shape and size. Um, you can do this with the polyline if you want it to, to go. So I can draw this, go to my polyline, switch my style to uh, hot water, click along, and then add that one to the tool chest instead. Put that in properties mode and now I can use that properly as I need it to be. You see it doesn't pop up with the line style as I click. As soon as I hit enter, it pops up with my line style there. So the next one I want to do is create a cold water line and I want it to be blue so I can signify the difference really easy. 
So I'm gonna go back to my style again in here. And I'm just gonna go manage again. And this time I'm gonna modify instead of putting a new line style set. So I'm gonna click my water lines and modify. And I'm just gonna add a new one. This one I'm gonna call cold water. And it's the same process we're gonna do here. So we're gonna add a dash and a space and text. We're gonna change that to cold water this time, so it's CW. And then we're gonna add another space and another dash. Oh, so now we've got our cold water line. I'm gonna hit OK. And then OK again. And then OK again. So now, so I'm just gonna click the polyline tool again. And this time before I draw it, I'm gonna change my style to be cold water. And I'm gonna change the color to be blue. So I'm gonna make it, let's go with, let's go with this blue here. And I'm just gonna draw my blue line as such, enter. And now I've got my cold water line. And again, we're gonna do the same thing and just right click and add it to the tool chest and put it in properties mode so I can redraw it as I want. And now I can reuse that tool again. So that's just the basic example of hot and, hot and cold water lines. You can use this for many different things. There is some built-in ones as well. So if you have a look through there, um, you've got the basic sort of dash ones in here, and then the advanced ones, you've got what they the fence line with circles, fence line with squares, there's gas, um, there's a basic hot water in there as well. There's a zigzag, and, um, dark roads, train tracks, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, depending on what you're doing, there may be some really pre-built ones, but you may want specific ones to um, how you work basically. So you can play around with creating them. It takes a little bit of practice to kind of get the hang of it, um, but once you do, it's quite a simple process. So that's creating symbols and uh, line sets, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, I will hang around for a little while and um, answer some questions if anyone has any. Um, if not, I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed today. So feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question or put it in the chat box, um, whatever you want to do. And, um, yeah. Primary both Any questions from anyone at all? If you do think of any after as well, if you don't quite get a chance to ask it, feel free to reach out to me, Alex, at advancedspatial.com.au. Um, we can always reconnect and do a team viewer session so that we can have a look. Yeah. See, Connor has said yes. Got a question there, Connor? Hi, mate. How are you doing? This is Connor here speaking. Hey, Connor. How are you going? Not so bad. Quick so one. Bad. Quick um, one. Okay. C for blue beam. See if let's just say you've got a there's a I don't know how to describe it like a like a circle or like a semicircle you're trying to you're trying to um, draw a line around. So as opposed to just constantly clicking and trying to get that circumference, is it possible to hold? I know there is a button you can hold like shift, but it never seems to work that well. I wonder if you could just kind of show me on your screen if you're trying to measure like a distance of like a circle on a screen. Say does that make sense? So you want to so you want to basically get the circumference of a circle. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, or like just, just say yeah, whatever it may be. It may be like a the line. If I'm measuring something that isn't a straight line, maybe it's 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 curved or like a curved wall yeah. or or whatnot. I'm trying to get yep. the a measurement. I just find I'm constantly having to click and, and try to make the angle that way. When you do a poly, is it a poly line or something or a poly? Yeah, that, that, that is what most people do. Do is what you're saying. Is click on points. There's really this though. So. Yeah. Um, in the measurement panel, um, you've got your basic measurement tools. But in the drop down next to it, um, we've got what's called dynamic fill. So you click that yeah. one and pop this uh, toolbar here. Um, I'm just going to do it around this room because it's got a nice curved surface to replicate on. So if you add a boundary first to close it in, so you just click to endpoints, hit enter, 
and then hit the fuel paint on to the small car there. And then you just click and hold on the room and it pulls it up. And then basically, if you want the kind of, you will be, there's a few different things you can get from here. You can do area, you can do poly leg, uh, you can do folding perimeter, whatever it is. Um, you can do just poly leg for now, and then hit fly. And you see it goes a bit crazy when you first do it. So just turn off the show safety values, and that'll give me the total perimeter of that one. Um, and then if you just want the length of that curve, which is what a lot of people try to get, all you do is right click the endpoint, so you go split, um, and then right click again, and then split, and then you can just delete off the outside ones, and that gives you your measurement. Is that the quickest way for just if you wanted to measure that that squiggly line there? Is that the quickest way to have to fill up the room and stuff? Can is there no way you can kind of just? Or what, what do you think? Yeah, I'd say that's the quickest way. Um, it's it's probably the quickest, most accurate. You could just click off the points like you were saying before, which is essentially what that's done. But this would get it a bit more accurate than you will be able to with your eye. Um, and yeah, I'd say just the biggest way. It does take a little bit of practice, but once you get used to that tool, it's really really simple to use. Um, you can use it as well in a few different applications, like um, you can fill up multiple rooms at the same time and get your area measurements in that kind of way as well. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say that's the best way to do it. All right, okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Connor. Cheers. Um, Alex, um, Jonathan here. Um, there's what about a a curved line? Like we usually have to sort of go relocate this from this location to this location. It's a pretty basic sort of. I just want a curved line with an arrow on it, but I don't have that in a in a standard symbol uh, or line type. Um, is there an easy way to have an an easy sort of point to point with a curve, like you would sort of show in in AutoCAD, um, a similar line like that. Is there an easy way to create that? So you, so you kind of want, like, let's say you've just got the curve kind of going from here to here, for example, and you want an arrow on the end of it. Is that the, I don't know. Yeah, but the, cur the curve never seems to work out quite well using that curve method. I, um, yeah, I find that tool is horrible, to be honest. Um, there is a couple of things you can do though. It's if you hold, I think it's shift when you use it. Um, so you hold shift and then you've got a, an arc that kind of is a bit more straight and stable. And then if you hold alt instead, um, you get a three point arc. So you can go that way. Um, so they're the kind of variations of that curve tool, but just basically it's a horrible tool to use, I find. But, um, yeah, to do this, you can change the line style, I guess, with this. So, um, create your own, add, uh, but I'm just going to add it to the standard ones. Ah, sorry, I'm going to add it to advanced, sorry, and modify it. And then add my own. So, I'm just going to call this, um, my example, you can obviously call it whatever you want. Um, so, the components, what can we do with this? Um, what was it going to give me? So, I'm just trying to think of what I'm going to do this with it. Get from here and draw. Oops, that was my nice. slump. Let me just try that again. So, there we go. So first, actually, I'm just going to add a dash and then my vector. And the vector is just going to be across there and then across there. And should be a way to make it. So then that puts the dash inwards more. You can put more dashes in here if you want it to just be it should be I just think it should be a way to make it so there's just one dash. Uh, sorry. Yeah, 
That's not going to work how I want to end up, I think. I might change that to. Yeah, it's just an hour and a little bit. Anyway, that will be me if that's all right. And I'll um, get back to you once I have a better kind of idea of how to. I, I want to know how to create it in just an hour on the end. There will be a way. Um, I just need to play around with it a little bit more if that's all right. But, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, it's more about just having a nice curve, like from point to point, um, that's yeah. easy to use. <laughs> well, right, yeah, leave that one with me and I'll, um, I'll see what I can do for you. Yep. All right, cool, thanks. No worries. Got any other questions for us? Just a just a quick one, Alex. I I couldn't get in in the in the first part of that, so I'm assuming that you're going to drop the um the meeting onto a um the video like last time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll send out the links this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole point going now as well. So if you need to look back at any of the other ones as well, they'll all be there. So yeah, thank you. No problem at all. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you very much for coming again, guys. And um, yeah, look forward to next week as well. Uh, I think next week's topic is on measurement. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for more links during next week. And, um, hopefully, we'll see you all there. If anything, anyone else thinks of any other questions after that. Just reach out to me, Alex, at advancedspatial.com.au, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But yeah, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next week.